welcome to Euro PCR 2024. I'm Chris Cook and I'm delighted to be joined here with Ole de Barca and we're here to talk about the hot off the press late-breaking clinical trial results yep. from Notion 2. So firstly congratulations to you and the team for bringing this study to us here today mm -hmm. um, and let's jump straight in and ask the first question is why do we need this study? Yeah, good question, because there are current randomized controlled trials comparing TAVI with surgery or SAVR in low surgical risk patients. However, all of these trials available, they excluded by cuspid patients and they mainly included still older patients, mainly more than, more than 75 years or at least more than 70 years of age. So that's different in the Notion 2 trial. In the Notion 2 trial, we really studied and compared TAVI versus surgery in low surgical risk patients with severe symptomatic aortic valve syndromes, but specifically targeting the younger patients, less than 75 years of age or 75 years of age. So in reality, it meant 60 to 75 years of age and also allowing bicuspid aortic valve stenosis. So really important addition to the evidence base. Yes. So how did you design the study? Yes, so we included 370 patients. They were simply one-to-one -one randomized, Tavi versus surgery. That was also in reality done, there was only minimal crossover to the S treated, but at, anyway, the, the primary analysis, study analysis was an intention to treat analysis. Okay, so look, we've been waiting. What are the key results? Yeah, before that, I want to add that indeed, uh, the average age, we succeeded in getting a real young patient mm. population in of an average age of uh, mean age of 71 years and the truly low, low surgical risk uh, of these patients of only 1.1 STS. Uh, uh, so, and then the primary result, the primary endpoint, was a composite of that stroke or rehospitalization related to either the procedure, the valve, or heart failure. So this one-year uh, incidence, uh, at one year, uh, the, the cumulative incidence was 10% in the TAVI arm versus 7% in the surgical arm. So an absolute risk difference of around 3%, which was below the pre-specified non-inferiority margin of 5%. However, due to the smaller sample size, with the upper limit of the 95% confidence interval surpassed this non-inferiority margin of 5%, but still overall seen uh, equal uh, results in the TAVI versus the surgery arm. So it's really fascinating, informative data. So. In your, in, in your impression, what's the impact of this trial for our clinical practice? Yeah, I think if one, one message we can take out of this trial, because there was a sub-analysis done in tricuspid and bicuspid, which made it, made it really interesting. And I think in the tricuspid patients, which were young and low risk, as long as they had a tricuspid anatomy, the, the, the results, the clinical outcomes were really on par. So I think there was clinical equipoise between Tavi and Sauer. However, in the bicuspid patients, we saw a signal of, of more events in the Tavi arm as compared to the surgical arm in these young bicuspid patients, mainly more higher rate of PVL and also uh, slightly more non-disabling stroke. So if you ask me on the impact for the, on my clinical practice, I would say, well, my direct impact uh, Right now, today, I would say if I have to do TAVI on a young bicuspid patient, maybe we have to be a bit more selective in which phenotypes of aortic valve stenosis we, we accept to treat. And if we proceed with it, we have to really consider cerebral embolic protection. On the other hand, I think we also have to be modest and acknowledge that there is maybe an underpowered part in this, especially in the sub-analysis. So this is only a call for further uh, research in this, this field, especially into the bicuspid field. Well, look, we really can't wait to see all of the other studies that are going to come out from, from Notion 2. So thank you to the team and uh, to you for that real contribution to the evidence base for us in TAVI, adding to the Notion family of studies, really, that help us make the right decisions for our patients.